What's going on everyone, Desktops Gaming here, welcome back to the channel, and if you're a follower of our Instagram, you may have seen this post here, uh, where we were going to look at this cooler, and I was just blown away by the engineering of how these fans mount, and uh, not in the best way, so let's talk about it. So today we're taking a look at the Rigentech Tysis cooler here. Uh, you know, upon first unboxing this thing, I'm thinking, well, you know, thing's got a massive heat sink on it. It's, you know, it's got these eight millimeter pipes. There are, you know, it's five of them. I'm thinking, you know, this is gonna be a very great beefy air cooler, a little bit older one from Rigentech, but really wanted to check them out. Um, until I kind of started getting into unboxing them, you know, I found these, you know, these big 140 fans and, you know, was you know pretty impressed by that. Like I said, the heat sink is impressively big. So I figured, you know, for medium to high end cooling should perform pretty well. Um, you know, and otherwise a pretty decent performing cooler, you know, I started unboxing everything, taking a look at everything. Uh, and then I got to how the fans are mounted on these. Uh, so we're going to do some thermal tests on these today, but first I kind of want to harp away real quick. If you'll uh, acknowledge me on that, uh, taking a look at the fans, we have one that's a three pin. And then we have one that's a four pin. So one's meant to go on the outside, one's meant to go on the inside or middle of the cooler here. And uh, I don't know, I was just really confused on to why, you know, these are different headers. And uh, there's no, you know, looking over the mounting kits, options here, you know, you have the mounting plates, you have all the mounting hardware. There's no splitter for these, so they had to be plugged into two different headers on your motherboard. So there's no way, I mean, I guess you could go in and dial in fan profiles, but there's no way to sync these two together to where they're operating at the same RPM, even though they're seemingly the same fan. Uh, looking at the back of them here, both 12 volt DC fans, both 0.25 amp, and I don't know why they decided to go with different headers on them. It just doesn't really make any sense to me. But what bothered me more than anything on this one was their mounting system. And we'll get some close-ups here where you guys can see, uh, but they basically have these little tabs here on them, these little rubber, I don't know, grommet tabs and they're meant to press or connect onto the cooler uh, via these little holes. It includes these, you know, typical fan mounting clips uh, that you see on most other air coolers, um, but I don't understand how they want you to put this on here. Uh, there's not really a good way to mount these unless you stretch it across from like the top or something hooking over this way. Uh, I don't really see how you're supposed to get it on there. Uh, but we're still gonna put together a test system today. I uh, just got a B550 motherboard here. We got our power supply out. Just gonna build an out of the box system to run this on with the R5 3600. Uh, just to check some thermals on it out real quick and to see if this beefy air cooler is all it's chalked up to be, you know, minus the uh, fan mounting system here. So we're back with probably one of the most rig setups I've ever done. Uh, I thought maybe it was just the spacing here uh, due to the MATX motherboard, but even the spacing on my ATX wouldn't have made that much of a difference. Uh, the front fan, uh, as you can see, kind of got it rigged here with just the little clips that they provide that don't work in any other function. Uh, and just have the two middle ones here uh, holding the center fan in place with these little things. And there's no really way to mount the bottom ones once you get it all assembled. I mean, you kind of can, but then again, this whole roll reason the front one's hanging off like this, while the heatsink doesn't really interfere with the RAM, the fan does. Uh, so unless you had some super low profile stuff or just a crazy gap in between where the um, bracket sets it and where your RAM sits, there's not really a good way to do this. I'm gonna come grab you guys real quick. I'll get you up a little closer so you can see. Yeah, this is how we have it running right now. Just kind of got the little clip clipping it back there. Like I said, I have one set of those installed. Not really a good way to get the bottom ones on there because you can't really get to that that well afterwards. But both are spinning. Like I said, I had to plug them into two different headers here. There's no included splitter in the box. Uh, this cooler definitely shows its age as far as when it was created. This guy is a little bit older. Uh, it's technically not meant for AM4 bracket mounting, but the, the hardware still fits just fine. Uh, AM3, AM3 Plus, AM4 didn't change all too much. So like I said, it seemed to fit fine. Uh, I'm gonna do some thermal tests real quick and we're gonna check it out. All right, so as you can see, you got the janky setup running. Uh, just wanted to build it out of the box here. Right now, I just have PBO enabled. Uh, like I said, we're sitting at a base of 3.6 or so, 3.5, 3.6. Uh, let's just do a multi-core test on a Cinemage R23. We'll do maybe 10 to 30 minutes just to see what the clocks do. Right now we're sitting in a uh, 
uh, CPU die average of uh, 31C uh, or so. Like I said, just setting with PBO on. Like I said, CPU's not doing anything right now. So let's go and start the test, see what we get up to. So we've been running the test for around 10 minutes now. Like I said, thermals don't seem to be moving too much. We're still hovering around 71C on average, even with it uh, kind of sloppily put together like this. Like I said, maybe if you had smaller fans or slimmer fans, this might work a little bit better. Like I said, I do want to take a look at the air balls they sent over as well. Uh, that one should be coming up here next week. Uh, like I said, I just want to kind of hammer on this one today after posting an Instagram post because of mainly this. Uh, again, don't mean to harp away too much, but uh, I don't know. I just don't see this as a win, uh, Ryzen Tech. Um, again, I know this is a little bit older, cooler now, and they know, know that you guys do have your core edition, which is like an all blacked out version of this. So we may talk, hit them up about that and see if we can take a look at it. Um, like I said, overall, I, I wouldn't give this a passing grade. Like I said, I mean, it would be better than some other stock coolers. And like I said, thermals aren't terrible after letting it run for a little over 10 minutes now. Like I said, we're averaging around 71C or so. Not bad, but like I said, I just can't see uh, this working in many mounting situations. And uh, like I said, thermals don't seem to provide that good of a reason to buy an air cooler of this size when you could get, definitely get away with other coolers. Anyway, guys, that about wraps it up. I appreciate you guys stopping by today. Let me rant a little bit. Uh, like I said, definitely check back with us uh, this coming this coming weeks. We'd have one other one from Ryzen Tech to take a look at. Another air cooler, slightly smaller one, so maybe mounting issues won't be as bad. Um, and then also have the review on the headset from uh, Edifier coming up. So if you guys want to stick around for that, definitely drop a comment down below. Let me know if you're hype about that. And of course, feel free to check out Instagram over Desktops Gaming. We're posting uh, some more close-ups of this janky setup. And, uh, of course, all the other builds and everything we do. All right, guys. That about wraps up today. Appreciate you guys for stopping by. Take it easy.